Cadillac have locked out the front row of the grid for the 12 hours of Sebring after a chaotic GTP qualifying session. It all got a bit messy after Matthew Yamane and the number 6 Penske Porsche crashed at turn 1 before anyone had finished a flying lap, bringing out the red flags. The session restarted with just 4 minutes left on the clock which isn't enough time to bring tyres fully up to temperature, so drivers had to go with whatever grip they had. Pipo Durrani was one of just three drivers to cross the line in time to complete two flying laps, and his first one, a 148.152, was quick enough to claim back-to-back -back poles to start 2024 for Whelan Cadillac. Sebastian Bourdais will start second in the Ganassi Caddy, with Louis Delatraz 3rd for WTR Andretti, Philip Eng 4th for BMW, Porsches lining up 5th, 6th and 7th, and Lamborghini will start its maiden GTP race from 8th on the grid. WTR Andretti will be kicking themselves, as Ricky Taylor in the 10 car managed to go quicker than Durrani, but the team worked on the car during the red flag, breaking the rules and therefore losing their lap time. It's hard to read much into such a strange qualifying. Durrani's time was almost three seconds off last year's pole, but the race appears pretty open, even if Cadillac go in as the marginal favourite. I understand we have a packed timetable, but I think it's a shame that IMSA resets the clock at four minutes, not the nine left when Yamane went off, denying us seeing these cars at their very best. In LMP2, PJ Hyatt took pole for AO Racing aboard Spike the Dragon, ahead of both United Autosports entries. PJ is new to prototypes this year, and it's fair to say he's really clicked with them, especially over one lap. Ben Keating will start from third, ending his pole streak at three, after he ruined his tyres with a wild moment at turn three mid-session. LMP2 quali ended early under red flag, as Dennis Anderson in the high-class car stopped on track, but no one was improving massively by this point. And in GT, it's pole for Jack Hawksworth and the Vassar Sullivan Lexus. They'll share the front row with the GTD pole sitters, and Rolex 24 winners, Winwood Racing, as Philip Ellis was the first of three standard GTD cars, before you get to Mario Farnbacker in the next pro entry on the grid. It's been a difficult weekend for the Iron Dames, and things only got worse in qualifying as Sara Bovey picked up a puncture on her outlap. In GTD, you aren't allowed to change tyres in quali, so the car will start from 58th and last on the grid. Tomorrow, it's race day for the Mobile One 12 hours of Sebring. The green flag waves at the early start time of 9.40 local, that's 13.40 UTC, with the race broadcast on Peacock and IMSA TV. USA Network begins coverage from 4 Eastern, with sunset just over two hours before the chequered flag. With the largest grid in a decade, the key for the race is going to be avoiding any incidents and arriving at night in the best condition possible. After four cautions in the final 90 minutes last year, it could well be that it's a short run night speed which is decisive and this was what Porsche nailed in 2023, as the third fastest car in the day came alive in the darkness. Who do you think will win Sebring? Please let me know in the comments below, and whilst you're down there, why not press that like button and subscribe to the channel? It really helps me out.